This is Skylar. We've been friends since childhood. When we were little, we liked to pick up rocks in my yard, looking for bugs underneath them. We were obsessed with bugs. We grew up in the same neighborhood, went to the same high school, and ultimately ended up at UGA. But while I've gone on to pursue other things, Skylar has circled back to insects. So not too much pressure. Yeah, see. So professionally, I am an undergraduate of entomology work at the University of Georgia. I work in the University of Georgia's black fly lab where I help in rearing and bioassays on Simulium vitatum, cytospecies IS7, the exact species that we use in all of our experiments. Um, beyond that, I do a lot of entomological outreach for the community. Um, I also have been doing some research on my own with flies throughout the, uh, the lab, like I mentioned. And I'm working, of course, on my collections, uh, always trying to grow that. Um, so I guess that's as far as professionally is concerned. This is UGA's Black Fly Lab. It's where Skylar works. The lab is special. It's the only one of its kind. Here, Skylar works with others to maintain and continue the growth of a family of black flies originally donated decades ago to UGA for the study of river blindness and various forms of pest control. Elmer Gray, Skylar's boss, has been working here for some time. Having built the tanks for these flies himself, he is a vital asset to the livelihoods of thousands of flies. Well, my name is Elmer Gray, and I'm the Public Health Extension Specialist for the state of Georgia and I also serve as a research professional uh, with the Department of Entomology at the University of Georgia. We operate a colony of black flies. Black flies are semi-aquatic insects where the larvae develop in flowing water and the adult fly emerges into the terrestrial environment. They are significant pests of man and animals. They transmit diseases in Africa. And as a result, there's a large effort to do control programs to try to control the populations in many parts of the world. This is the only colony of black flies in the world. And it's really a matter of, of the resources that are involved, the space that's involved, and the fact that um, it takes a, a, a pretty significant effort to, to maintain them and a team of people to do it. So it's a unique, unique opportunity from that standpoint. I was hired in 1999 at the University of Georgia, which was the year that West Nile virus was found in uh, New York City. By 2001, it had moved to Georgia, or been found in Georgia. And during that time, there was a lot of interest in mosquitoes and mosquito control. That's uh, been a big interest of mine because I grew up on the coast of New Jersey where the mosquitoes are really bad. So being able to come back and work with mosquitoes later in my career has been kind of fun. Something that you young people should should focus on is that when you find a good supervisor, you know good good supervisors can lead you to good places. If you come across someone or, you, or they strike you as being the wrong person or not the kind of person that you can look up to, um, keep looking. I'm an outdoorsman by trade. I uh, love to garden. Anything outdoors. When I work all day in here, if I had any choice when I left this building, would be to go outside and to stay outside until dark. Love to use my hands, uh, whether it's gardening or whatever, fixing stuff. I used to carve duck decoys. I had worked on boats growing up on the coast of New Jersey doing fiberglass work. So when these tanks would be would leak, um, I knew how to fix them. So yeah, being able to repair things and being good with your hands is helpful. At UGA, entomologists have one advisor, Marianne Shockley. Dr. Shockley runs the insect zoo helps entomology students, teaches classes, and has a strong interest in outreach. She welcomed my project and let me set up an interview in her office, which was a very interesting place in itself. Um, you never like never accidentally really killed anything? I don't think so. Do you have a favorite? Yeah. Ginger, which is in the bottom, she's my favorite tarantula. But she is not handleable. But then these guys right here are called vinegaroons. So it's also called a whip scorpion because the little tail it has on its abdomen. And they get their name vinegaroon because they actually produce um, an acid. It's called. It's a mix of like acetic acid and 
oxalic acid, I believe. That's the log. Oh wow, he's made a web. Oh my goodness, what? I have never seen you do that before. So, I mean, if you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right. My name is Dr. Marian Shockley. I'm an outreach entomologist. Uh, my title is academic professional and I'm the director of the Insect Zoo, which is our live arthropods, our traveling educational exhibit. And I teach uh, our study abroad program to Ecuador and the Galapagos and teach several other classes. I've always been interested in science and nature and uh, my undergrad was uh, in biology. So when you had to come back for, or when I decided to come back for a master's degree, you needed to specialize. And when I looked at all of my undergraduate coursework, uh, the entomology classes were the most intriguing to me. They um, were simple to me, it came very naturally. So if you're gonna do something for the rest of your life, it might as well be fun. I definitely have an interest in arthropods. Uh, I mean, as an entomologist, we of course study insects, the six-legged creatures, but by default, we also study a lot of their cousins, the other arthropods, uh, particularly the terrestrial arthropods, like scorpions, mites, ticks, um, spiders, things like that. People are fearful of them, and it's really kind of unwarranted. Most, most spiders, especially, are completely harmless. Um, and the same thing with insects, I'd probably say 98% of insects are, are harmless. It's just a very small few that give most insects a bad rap. I uh, always enjoyed nature, grew up in a very agricultural environment, so you know, being amongst nature, um, hunting and fishing and all those sorts of things, being very involved with 4-H and FFA, um, I've always been in tune with my you know, animals around me, plants around me, um, and, and my food. So we have one of the classes that I teach is called Outreach and Service Learning, and the students are required to do five of these outreach events where they take live insects and arachnids into the community and lead these educational um, campaigns. I have Entomology 3300S with her, which is Service and Outreach. It's kind of a wild class. It's unlike anything I've ever taken, but it's pretty fun. Um, and even if it's kind of something that's more outside of your comfort zone, kind of easing you into that, so it's good fun. Uh, I would recommend to other students because you're probably not going to have the chance later in life to just handle, uh, you know, big tarantulas, fainting beetles, you know, you name it. There is so many different bugs that you, if you want, you don't have to, but you can let them kind of like crawl over your arm and um, teach other people about them. And so it's definitely kind of a once in a probably lifetime opportunity to kind of get a hands-on experience with some of these crazy Amazon rainforest type bugs, so. I still don't think there's any escaping the fact that they look just insane. They're just ridiculously different. I don't, I'm not sure there's a way to, you know, normalize what they look like rather than just learn to appreciate it. As children, Skylar and I loved being outdoors so much. We were never inside. But after a while, when we got older, things started to change. We both moved on to different things and it seemed that we lost this interest in nature. Which is why I was surprised to hear he was studying entomology. But I've learned over the course of filming that nature was not just something he came back to. It never left him. Um, when I was little, back in elementary school, they would tell us to go read books, right? They'd be like, all right, you gotta go to the library. You gotta read a book. And I'd always be the one kid that's like, you know what? I'm gonna go like not read at all. I'm gonna go look at the nature stuff. And uh, there was like four or five insect books. There was one about ants I always picked up. I, I like just kind of hanging out. I like things to just be quiet and calm. Um, I can appreciate silence, just nature in general. You know, if you can go out and sit on a rock and watch the river go by for a couple hours, I think that's it's probably one of the most serene things you can come upon. The community and humanity in general appreciating nature will help us not only enrich in our lives uh, to see what's beyond that isn't human, but also to, to get the, the sense that, you know, again, like I mentioned, this isn't our planet. And now that, that's getting, you know, pretty, pretty, non-entomological, but nonetheless, I do think it's extraordinarily important um, to look past yourself. I think if you're going from something that looks like one of these guys to something that looks like us, it really is amazing and it just kind of shows how little we truly understand. One thing I started doing a couple years ago was I began gardening. I think that's a huge thing that people could do um, to not only see more insects, but appreciate more insects. Like I have a small garden that I do. It's really not that big. It may be a collection of like 10 different kinds of vegetables, but it's still very exciting. 
I'm just a nerd that likes bugs. I don't know. Like, I, I like them. I like drinking tea. I like playing drums. I like hanging around. Love bugs. If I could do it forever, you know, could just study them, look at them all day. Yeah, I'd be happy. No, it would be great. This is the thing I'm investing time in. It's the thing that, you know, I've learned a lot about already. So let's keep going down that path and, and let's, let's see what good we can do for everyone going down that path. So that's kind of my personal take on where I'm going right now.